Hey guys, Kamish here. Coming to you live from uh, the headquarters of Billy Bob Martin and Furman United FC. Uh, a wonderful soccer club, wonderful group of Christian men that uh, just care for kids. And I'm, I'm honored to be here. Billy Bob is mentoring uh, me and the boys before we head into our playoff matchup against Chris, which has already started, but we're just gonna ignore that. We're, we're doing that today. We're not watching the Vikings Colts game. Uh, we're, we're learning from Billy Bob and, and his infinite wisdom. So, you know, we're very excited to be here. It's a, it's a great honor and privilege for my team to have been invited out by him. Um, last week, we played against the Philly Cheesesteaks in the Grim Reaper Bowl, uh, a, a, a historic game that is uh, quickly becoming one of the best robberies that this league has. The Grim Reaper Bowl started three years ago. For those that don't know, in the Forge Football Follies League, that's where I met Chuck, Brody, and Sean. And uh, we played in the last week of the regular season. Chuck needed a win or just to do better than Sean. It's like if he lost and Sean won, then he just needed to outscore Sean. Well, that didn't happen. Um, Sean won and like three other teams all lost and then Chuck lost and that catapulted Sean into the playoffs in Chuck's spot that he had heading into that week. Um, and since then, I beat him four times. And I'm not saying that to knock him at all. I think he's a wonderful manager. Uh, and an excellent addition to this league, and we're very, very proud to have him. Um, I'm just saying that every time we play, it's a really good game. And this past week, uh, that was that was one of the best games of the regular season. I just wish there was something on the line. I think it, the game would have looked differently had either one of us had something to play for because we were both in the playoffs at that point. Um, so it really, at that point, didn't really matter if we if we win or lost. So just a great game. Congrats, Chuck. Uh, I think you're going to be a formidable foe in the playoffs. I think uh, I think you've got a great shot at winning it all. Now, that being said, I don't think you will win it all. I think Children of the Corn um, are going to bring home the G Vegas Great Iron Trophy back to Kansas next year. Um, at least that's what I that I fully expect that to be the case. He's had an outstanding season, you know, he, which is I'm happy for him. He took over for Timbo, agreed to do the punishment if 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 that's what ended up happening. Um, he's been rewarded for, for that for that for that faith. Um, and, uh, you know, the Lord's just been with his team this whole season, and it's clear. It's very clear the Lord is with him. I'm hoping that he can unseat the black magic of John Libby McLovin, who looks to be in big trouble as a one seed. Historically, the one seeds, the, the top seeds don't actually normally win the championship, but they do, they do not lose their first round game. This year, it looks like he could lose his first round game against a terrific eight seed. The only time I can think of historically where the top overall seed lost in the first round was back in 2014 when all 16 teams made the playoffs. Um, at that time, Timbo was the number one overall seed, and uh, he lost to the Circus Kim's brother, Elliot Corbin, who had gone 1-12 that year. And despite going 1-12, he beat Tim in the playoffs. Um, Tim, unfortunately, ended his time in the league without a playoff win, so... He has less playoff wins than Elliot Corbin, who only lasted another season after that. That playoff win bought him one more year in the league, despite his terrible record. But he went 1-11 that next season. And so he just, he had to go. He had to go. Um, speaking of people having to go, I know it's been a hot topic around the league. You know, we got guys that are really worried about their futures here. Um, I've had multiple people reach out and ask if they're in the hot seat. And I just want to, I just want to assure everyone if you're one of the ones reaching out, you're probably not in the hot seat. Um, it's one thing, it's, it'd be one thing if if you weren't setting your lineups and, and you weren't chatting, that'd be a problem. Um, if you weren't setting your lineups and you are chatting, it's less of a problem, but more confusing than anything. And uh, if you're, yeah, if you're setting your lineups and, and you're not involved in the chat, you know, you're on a short leash, but at least you're good to go. So if you're all that to say, if you're reaching out to me and you're curious if you're in the hot seat, you're probably not. You're probably not. With the exception of the North Korean circus fighting Kims who have lowered this league standard to a point possibly beyond return. Um, with, with our dear friend who's really busy with two jobs, um, no longer in the league, I thought that the quality of trades um, would, would go up. I thought we would cease to see such lopsided um, season-altering trades. 
um, that end up catapulting people into championships while damning others. But I was completely wrong. Um, the Circus Kims have taken that mantle and they have just run with it. And they've done an outstanding job at uh, continuing on his legacy. So I don't know if that was their goal, was to honor him. That would make it make a little bit more sense, but um, just a horrible year for trades from the Circus Kims. Not just not just on the Kelsey trade, by the way. I mean, I'm talking so many trades throughout the year that, I, I mean, I think he lost all of them. I think he lost every trade that he made. And even beyond that, they don't even make any sense. So really not sure what was going through his head this year. You know, I'm sure he was busy, not as busy as Timbo, but still busy. You know, we've, we've all been busy with different things, but uh, I think the business really took a toll on him this fall. And uh, we're excited for potentially a bounce back season if he's still in the league next year. So um, it is Christmas time. So if, if Corbin, if you're watching this and you want to send some bribes uh, the League Leadership Council's way, then uh, feel free to do so. It, it'd be very easy just to, you know, give us some bribes and, and call it a Christmas gift. Um, you could even use New Spring if you want to funnel money to us through New Spring. Clemson football's been doing that for years. Um, they call it a love offering, and it just so happens to go to football players and their families, uh, assuming they're four or five stars. Um, and, and they're just they're just trying to do their best to love and serve others, just like Ubi, which I'm very proud of. Very proud of Clemson football uh, and and Dabo for his good work for the Lord. Um, just a wonderful Christian institution, Clemson football. So, anyways, um, outside of that, we got the Sean bracket. We got a few teams in there that I would say are legit contenders for it. Everyone else, I think, will end up being safe. Although last year, I would never have pegged. 13 waffles on Chris Rawlings. So we'll see what happens. Fantasy football is very unpredictable, and we could have a lot of injuries between now and the end of the season. But uh, Luke, Jose, Dickweed, those are the three I'm looking at and thinking, I don't know. If DJ and Rory were down there, I would I would throw them in there too. Just horrible teams. I don't know how they made the playoffs. As a league, we have to do better to make sure that uh, teams like theirs don't make it through uh, in the years to come especially when we've got really strong teams that are playing in the Sean bracket while these guys, their matchups were over as soon as they even got announced. Um, just takes the fun out of the playoffs. So, um, yeah, it, <clears throat> Jose and Luke, um, they're playing against each other this week, so one of them will be safe by the end of the week. I think Jose is probably at most danger of losing that one. I think Luke might be able to escape. Jose just had a really hard time recovering. Uh, from Mexico's early exit in the World Cup, and I don't blame him at all. It's been really hard for my team to get focused. Uh, but thankfully, we had that mid-season week of prayer at Bob Jones University that really gave us the mental strength and toughness that we needed to move on from that and seal our spot in the playoffs. Um, but I'm now in a position where I'm going to have a hard time recovering from Gigi won yesterday watching Rogue One and uh, saying that she felt nothing. I, I, I just don't even know how that's possible. Um, when Chira Umwe, who's the blonde Asian guy, lets the force lead him uh, to save the rebellion and turn on that master switch, uh, it gets me every time. It gets me every time. I don't know how she wasn't moved by that. So I'm going to have a hard time recovering from that. The next few weeks, with that in mind, I'm going to make a break for our relationship. So I appreciate your prayers and how to best handle that situation moving forward. Hopefully it doesn't impact uh, my team during the playoffs. That'd be a real shame if it did. So, anyways, well, I'm going to let you all go. Um, I will see you next week. Good luck to everybody who's competing this week. And good luck also to Rory and DJ as well. So, we'll see you guys later. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas.